Hello and welcome to episode 3 of Old School RuneScape. So I think I'm going to be jumping in and doing the last 5 free to play quests. So I'll give it to my editor to discuss and we'll go from there. Hello everyone, it is me, the editor again. You guys loved me so much, I thought I'd just go ahead and become a permanent fixture on Kat's channel. Uh, <laughs> also, thank you for throwing me under the bus, Kat. But, um... Here we go. The first quest is X marks the spot. Cat speaks to Veos located in the Sheared Rams pub in Lumbridge. Essentially, he loves treasure hunts, but not knowing the area, he is stuck and unable to progress any further. He tasks Cat to find the treasure for him. Personally, I think he should retire from treasure hunting, but that's just me. This quest is an introduction on how to do clue scrolls, and considering Cat has done plenty, plus the power of rune light, she was able to dig in the four spots she needed to find the casket with ease. You give Veos the ancient casket and boom, quest complete. Rune Mysteries. At this point, every NPC needs help with something. So Kat's go-to response is, got any quests? That's exactly what happens. After speaking to Duke Horatio in the Lumbridge Castle, he states he has found this strange talisman. He is curious about its origin, but not curious enough to go talk to Cedridor himself. So, after giving us the talisman, we go to Cedridor in the Wizard's Tower, who's like, Oh my god, this is interesting. In fact, it may well be the last piece of the puzzle. Then drones on forever with the history of rune essence mines and such before eventually giving us some resources to take to Aubrey and Varric. We speak to Aubrey, who now gives us his notes after looking at Cedridor's, and finally we head back to Cedridor, who completes the research, giving us access to the Rune Essence Mine and Quest Complete. Now, this quest is important, as it unlocks rune crafting. so word of advice for next time, Cat, if you ever do Iron Man, DO THIS QUEST FIRST! Prince Ali Rescue so, Prince Ali of al Karid has been kidnapped by Lady Kelly, and we are hired to stage a rescue mission to bring him back. Firstly, Kat had issues with this mission. The plan is to get a disguise for Prince Ali to look like Lady Kelly so we can sneak him out undetected. To do that, you need a disguise which you get pretty early in the quest and some rope. Give three drinks to the guard so he's sloshed and doesn't know what the f*** is happening. And then tie up Lady Kelly in a cupboard and use the key that she has to the cell to release the prince. Give him the disguise and quest complete. That's how it should go, anyways. Instead, once you get the disguise, you have to stroke Kelly's ego enough to allow her to let you touch the key, which you make an imprint. Then you go to Osman outside the palace in El Karid and give him the imprint with an iron bar. Then you talk to Leela, who gives you a bronze key. Then you give the drinks to Joey the guard, tie up Lady Kelly, and use your own key. Wouldn't it have been easier to just take the key from Kelly in the first place? Anyways, once the prince is released, we talk to Hassan in the palace and quest is complete. This quest just, I didn't know. No, that's all I gotta say, just no. Demon Slayer. Firstly, Kat speaks to Eris, paying her one coin for a story. BARGAIN! She tells us there used to be a demon named Delrith who terrorized Varric centuries ago. He was defeated by a hero named Wally using the legendary sword Silverlight. Unfortunately, the demon is being summoned again and it's time we become a hero, but we need to destroy it with Silverlight, so that's our mission. Get Silverlight and destroy the demon. However, nothing is that simple. In order to get Silverlight, we need three keys. The first is from Captain Roven, who goes on a rant about Sir Prison and that he doesn't take orders from him. After a bit, he agrees to give us this key, but under the pretense that Sir Prison doesn't kill the demon. Guess he doesn't know NPCs don't do quests themselves, so we promise that we will be the ones to kill the demon. Next key is from Wizard Triborn. He has locked away the key in a magical wardrobe, and in order to gain access, he needs 25 bones. So, you give him the bones, he does the ritual, and the second key is obtained. As for the third key, the idiot Sir Prison has lost it. So we chuck some water down the drain just outside the kitchen of the palace. Enter the sewers, examine a pile of skeletons, and we find the third key. We got... dirty. Because Sir Prison is irresponsible. What a great guy! This is why he doesn't have Silverlight. Anyways, 
We finally get Silverlight going to the Varrock Stone Circles. We finally get a cutscene of Delrith and destroy him. Earlier with Aerith, she specifically gives us an incantation that is randomized for each player, which you have to recite when you defeat Delrith. However, Cat, after writing it down, found out that if using Runelight, it will give you the correct order. So that's good to know for next time. And after saying the right words, you complete the quest. Now for the final quest in free to play. Dragon Slayer 1. So first you'll talk to the Guildmaster in the Champions Guild. He'll tell you to talk to Ozaiak in Edgeville. He'll tell you that not everyone can buy his pristine rune plate bodies. Only those worthy enough can wear such things. He will only sell us it if we do one thing for him. Kill the notorious green dragon Elvog. So we talk to Guildmaster again and we must go through every question otherwise we can't progress the quest. So we get an anti-dragon shield from Duke Horatio before we need to get three map pieces to show us how to get to Crandor. For Thalzer's map piece, Cat spoke to the Oracle on Ice Mountain. Then, going into the Dwarven Mine, you use Silk, Lobster Pot, an Unfired Bowl, and a Wizard Mine Bomb on the Magic Door. Enter and search the chest for the first piece. Lozar's map piece. Going to jail in Port Serum, you see Worm Brain behind bars. You have two options, give him 10,000 coins and he will give you the map piece, or you could say, screw you, I'm taking it by force. Kill him with ranged magic, then telegraph the map piece, which is exactly what Cat did and I am so proud of you Cat. You did a great job choosing violence. <laughs> For Melzar's piece, you will be given a maze key earlier by the Guildmaster. Using that, you have to go through a maze. I know, shocking, isn't it? killing enemies for different color keys until you ha have to get to the lesser demon. Don't be like Cat and forget food, because you will have to leave and will have to do the maze all over again, but second time's the charm and finally you get the map piece. Once all three map pieces are obtained, you need to acquire a boat. As free to play, the only way to obtain planks is in the wilderness, but after buying a boat, repairing the boat, and speaking to Ned to be captain of the boat, we are ready to set sail. So after a cutscene, we make our way into Elvarg's cave and defeat Elvarg. Once defeated, we cut off the head, travel back to Ozayak in Edgeville, and finally complete the quest. Also, buying the rune body. And that's all of the free-to-play quests done. Okay, so now that I've done Dragon Slayer, I bought the rune uh, plate body, and now I think I am ready to do... Um, or going to doing members so I've got an old school bond right here which I'm going to be using but before that I did wonder what I would be doing and something that I always constantly go on about is that my run energy suck a lot I have about a one minute run time and to get from zero to a hundred it takes like 12 minutes so i want to try and do something about that so what i'm going to do i'm going to redeem my bond uh 14 days yep except please log out before attempting to log into members world so that's what i'm going to do and now i am a member <laughs> it feels actually so nice now I want to do something with my run energy obviously that means if we go to my skills I need to start leveling up agility but the first thing I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be doing the uh, priest in peril quest uh, mostly because uh, I want to do some agility and at level 40 I think yeah, I need to unlock the Canopy's rooftop course. That means in order to get that one, I need to unlock pre I need to do Priest in Peril, which unlocks uh, Mauritania, which allows me to go to Canopy's. And Canopy's is, from what I can gather, the only rooftop course that doesn't decrease the amount of marks of grace you get after 20 levels above. So after once i get to 60 levels i can still get quite a few marks of grace from the cannabis rooftop course whereas if i unlock i don't know drain or map drain or village rooftop get to level 30 and continue doing it i have a decrease a substantial decrease in marks of grace and i need about 260 marks of grace uh for a full graceful helmet uh for graceful armor or outfit should i say so i'm gonna pro i'm gonna do that 
uh, relatively quickly, and then once we've done that, we'll start doing agility. Priest in peril. Speaking to King Ronald, he has lost communication with the temple and wants us to check it out for him. So once we get to the temple, we try speaking to Drizzle through the doors as we can't enter. However, unfortunately, our character is idiotic since we can't hear the fact that whispering is occurring or snickering. They tell us that we need to kill the temple guardian and because we are stupid and believe we are speaking to Drezzle, we do just that. After telling Drezzle and feeling happy with ourselves, we go back to King Ronald who is enraged since the dog was guarding the palace from attacks. Oops! Guess it's time to redeem ourselves! We go back to the temple and this time we can enter. Killing one of the monks, it gives us a golden key. Heading to the top floor, we finally speak to the real Drezzle. After a lengthy dialogue, we go down to the trap door where we kill the dog, and the idea is to find the monument with a key on it and swap it out for our key. However, there are other monuments with different items, golden versions. Now, even though these golden items have no functional purpose, like the golden tinderbox cannot be used to light fires, Cat was determined to get them all, so exchanging all items before continuing on. Returning to Drezzle, getting him to bless the murky water, and using the blessed water on the coffin that has a vampire inside it, allows Drezzle to leave. Going back down in the dungeon, we speak to Drezzle, who is constructing a barrier to Mauritania, but needs 50 unnoted essences, so after we finally give him them, we can finally talk to Drezzle one last time, and quest complete. Okay, so I've done the priest in peril, meaning that I can actually pass through the holy barrier, get to Mauritania, but for now, I don't want to do that. For now, I have some other business to do, and that is the agility. So, um, okay, so here means gnome stronghold agility cause or low level agility area obstacle. From what I can tell, the gnome stronghold is what I should do to level 10, go to Draenor village, then do the rooftop ones because I can get marks of grace from those. Uh, so I'm going to make my way to the gnome stronghold which is like freaking here. <laughs> all the way, oh yeah, here, all the way over here. So I don't know how I'm going to do that. Uh, I'll figure it out though. So yeah. Okay, so, oh my god, that took ages to get here. Oh, okay, so I did do a dunce, uh, a dunce random event. So I've got this book of knowledge and, hello there, hi. Could you help me lift these boxes? Okay, then let's do it. Thanks, Traveller. Okay, so I got the dunce book of knowledge, but I don't know whether or not this actually goes up depending on your level and I want to put it in agility so I've decided that I'm going to do a few levels in agility first uh, before using the book. I could be wrong. I probably am wrong but like I might as well do this so yeah. Okay my first ever obstacle course going on on this character. Yeah, there we go. Oh, seven. There you go. And I like the fact that I can know where I need to click. So come on, scaredy cat, get across that rope. I am doing it. There we go. And apparently you cannot fail this course. So that's kind of nice to know. And then we do, that is one lap of Gnome Stronghold and I got agility level two, okay. So, oh, I completed a easy task. Okay, so, ah, uh, right, okay. So that means that, uh, mm, okay, so I can do achievement diaries now. Okay, yeah, that that's good. Okay, so I'm gonna continue doing this for a little while and then when I get to level 10, We'll see how many laps it takes. Okay, so I this should be the sixth lap, like so, and in level six agility. I am gonna be using the book of knowledge on agility just for a few levels. Okay. I was only rewarded 90 agility <laughs> XP. <laughs> okay, so I've got like four more levels to go, so yeah. And level 10 coming in thick and fast. Come on. There we go. Agility level 10. So I can do the Draenor Village course. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I might as well finish off this lap. Uh, why not? And then I'll switch over and do Draenor for a bit. 
Okay, so I did a lap of the Draenor Village agility course. Honestly, it wasn't too bad. Uh, I do like this one. And I got an achievement diary for it. Achievement task, so... Yeah, and I got some food because apparently you can fail this one, so I'm just waiting until I get my first mark of grace. I'm going to be so excited when I do. And my first mark of grace, which all oh, feels so good. Okay, so I need, I think it was 260 to get the full graceful outfit. So I think what I'm going to do... I'm going to sit on doing rooftops until I basically get it and I'll probably do like a little montage like I've done in every single episode at this point uh, with the levels and stuff. So let's see how long it takes. Obviously now I can do the cannabis rooftop course. I'm going to be sat there for ages and I do mean ages. I'm hoping to do maybe 24 hours, 48 hours of just doing agility and just trying to get as many marks of grace as possible. I need 260 but also just getting my agility level up as far as possible because I think from 0 to 100 before took about 12 minutes to replenish now it's taking just a little under seven minutes at this point in time uh so i want to get that as good as possible so i don't have to keep saying oh run energy sucks uh another thing that i did is if i'm doing agility for way too long i'm gonna be bored and i want to do something else so i thought uh i need something that will give me a little bit of gold probably not that much but just a little and that's why i have also managed to get five levels in thieving i'm just gonna keep just this is all i'm gonna do that's it just thieve from this tea store uh every so often uh not gonna do anything other than those two things so when i come back i should have quite a few levels in agility and maybe quite a few levels in thieving i don't know how long i'm gonna be doing this for but i mean how much is this on the ge okay not that much but a little is better than nothing so i'm gonna come back in about a day or so and we'll see where my stats are at that point now you're probably looking at my bank and seeing that i have these rogues gear and some angler gear so let me tell you what happened so i got enough marks of grace to buy the full graceful set so i bought that and because i was in the general vicinity of the rogues den mini game to get the rogues outfit i decided to run the rogues den and i did that over and over until i got the rogues outfit and i was really happy now one of the things is that i'm not exactly sure how to level up construction in the beginning stages and i decided that because i'd already got two sets of full gear i might as well go for a third and fishing trawler made sense because if i bought a house i could not only try and get the uh pieces of gear for the fishing trawler which is the angler gear but i can also level up construction at the same time so it's going to be a win-win scenario so i've been recording myself doing fishing trawler mini game i've been recording myself getting the pieces when i do get them but unfortunately during a game of fishing trawler halfway through connection was lost now i thought it was something on my end so i logged out of runelight i logged back in and i did that multiple times i couldn't get into any world i then decided to restart my pc and that's when tragedy struck because i forgot to stop my recording and when i realized what i had done it was too late and when i came back on i tried to open the file and it's just corrupted i can't get anything back so everything that i recorded me getting the graceful outfit me running the rogues den mini game me getting the rogues outfit me doing the fishing trawler me buying my house me getting the angler pieces outfits that's all gone and that's why i'm showing you here i have it i just don't have the video unfortunately and it turns out it wasn't even my fault 
Like, everyone who was doing the fishing trawler at, the, at that point, the server crashed. Our accounts were held hostage by World 370. And to be fair, it only took 40 minutes to resolve itself or them doing something to kind of help us. But, oh my gosh, yeah, I'm just really annoyed that I lost all of that video. It's really annoying. I might end up doing some quests in this video then. <laughs> but yeah, I got one more piece of the Angler outfit. I should be really overjoyed at this point, but I'm not. <laughs> oh my god, finally. 61 clears, and I finally got all of the pieces of gear. So let's have a look. Collection log. Uh, mini games. Vision trawler. Oh my god, that looks so nice. I think for now... Wood cutting is at level one, so I'm gonna try and do some wood cutting. I might just hit that up to level 50 and try and get some total levels in. I think that's probably gonna be the best thing that I can do for now. Okay, so I was doing some wood cutting and my aim was to get to 50 wood cutting, but it turned out that the only place that I can get a mithril axe and above is the wood cutting guild, and I need level 60 for that. Uh, someone told me about Winter Todd and basically said that at level 50 fire making, um, I get I can get a chance to get the dragon axe. It's like a ridiculous chance. Uh, so I decided why not try it out. I've done about five kills and I've already got the Burma torch. Uh, I did try and record doing that, but I kind of missed it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stay here for a little while and I'm going to try and get some supply crates and I'll open them up on stream. Uh, well, on here. Uh, they do not stack, unfortunately, but oh well, um, back to the grind. Okay, so winter done. Winter Tartar has been done 10 times. I've got five supply crates, so we're gonna open them up. Okay, burnt pages, nice. Mm. Oh, oh, warm gloves. Okay, nine and 10. Okay, so we'll wear the warm gloves over the clear hunter gloves. And okay, so we got some good stuff. Back to Winter Tartar I go. Okay, so I've got another fire crates, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to open these. If I don't get anything, I'm just going to grind Winter Tide and just get a bunch of crates and then probably do like a montage of opening them up. So we'll see what we get. Uh, pure Essence Maple Logs. Okay, not bad. Uh, silver Ore, which I hadn't got before, so great. Uh, maple Logs, Willow Seed. I just need an acorn. <laughs> uh, grimy. Guam leaf, all right, and then raw anchovies and raw swordfish. Okay, not too bad. Um, okay, back to grinding. So again, I'm gonna just grab a bunch of crates and then I'll just open them next time you see me. Okay, so I was on a winter tod world for a while and I found that I was getting 500 points for the supply crates, but if I tried to aim for 750, I just couldn't do it. I kind of persuaded a friend of mine, Killer, to help me out. Uh, we've been in the world. It's been stressful. I also did uh, the Druidic Ritual because I needed it to heal the pyromancers. But anyway, I've got 10 boxes here, so we're going to open them uh, five at a time. And we're going to see what we get. So... First one is Coins on Emeralds Burnt Page, 23, nice. Uh, tree Cogs, okay, not bad. Uh, mahogany Logs, again, not bad. Uh, Uncut Emeralds times two, which is cool. And Quam Seeds, okay, so that's the first uh, five boxes. And then we've got another five boxes, so we're going to open them. Uh, three coins, okay, uncut sapphire, nice. Snape grass seeds, all right, how much are those worth? Okay, that, that's not bad. U logs, right, yeah, great. Okay, coins, U seed. Now you can see this one is the one that I've actually started doing with my friend, uh, Undated Killer here, uh, because I got a lot more things in that one, so, and we're gonna open the last and final one. And we actually got an acorn, which is kind of what I wanted. Back to the grind, I guess. Okay, so I got uh, level 66. And this 
I don't like winter time. Not at all. It's stressful, but we're gonna open the supply crate. My uh, high score, 3,385. So we'll see what we get. Apart from burnt pages, not not anything great. So I think I'm gonna take a break from here and I might do a bit of Temporus uh, for a little while. So yeah. Okay, so I did state that I would probably go over to Temporus, just grind out a bunch of rewards and just open them. And I decided that I was going to forego that. And the reason being is because even though I could grab 100 permits, it would take me a while to do. And then by the time I open it, I probably won't be in a good chance of actually getting any good stuff from it. So my easiest solution would be to just grind out about a thousand permits and then open them up. But anything less I think wouldn't be great. I probably won't get a chance to get something good from it. So that's kind of why I haven't done uh, or why I'm not going to be opening uh, the reward permits for Temporus. Now, I did learn how to do Temporus solo. I did also take the opportunity to learn how to do Winter Top solo, which is frustrating because if I get to the end, I can actually just kind of, it's a breeze. I just then have to kind of grind out points, but then other people come in, uh, ruin my thing and end the game uh, quickly when I don't want to end it so that's kind of happened twice and it's frustrating when that happens because I'm like I wanted more points I wanted more chance of rewards in the in the crates and you've just come in and just ruined that for me uh, so I probably won't be doing winter top that much but I will probably grind uh, temporus a lot obviously I'm gonna have be here for a little while in the ruins of Camdozor not because I want mining but I just want the baronite shards because there are two items that I am missing from the collection log uh, if we have a look here we we're missing the incando hammer uh, which will mean that doing temporus will be easier because I can just wield that and not bring a hammer with me and the ancient astroscope which I can can give to the uh, or museum in Vara can get some uh, kudos as well uh, so yeah I want to get those two items before I kind of move on so I'm gonna be here for I have no idea it's gonna be a long time I'm gonna get mining XP smithing XP uh, if I'm doing temperos I'm gonna probably get quite a bit of fishing and cooking experience and some uh, where is it now? So my construction is level 37. It's going to continue going up because when you fix the masks in Temporus, it gives you a decent chunk of experience in construction. And I have not even built anything in my home. And yet my level is 37. So <laughs> that's going to be interesting. Uh, I want you guys to kind of comment in the comment section below for the next episode. What do you want to see? Is there anything that I should do? And I know a lot of you are going on about me doing as many quests as I possibly can in the next episode. But there's a reason why I don't do that. So please kind of stop telling me to do that. I want to do it, but I just know that I won't be able to do that. Uh, but if there's something in the game that I can do right now that you haven't seen me do, let me know in the comment section below and it'll give me ideas on where to go in the next episode because right now I'm just doing whatever pleases me and it's been fun but I just want to explore a little bit more and you guys are the way to go. So <laughs> uh, thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, hopefully you guys have enjoyed it too. Give it a like, give it a give my channel a subscription you know if you do want to see more videos and i'll see you all in the next one Ta -ra.